we would love to ask you, I don't know if you saw anything about what happened at the Basilica of the National Shrine at the Na Immaculate Conception last night with the Catholics for Choice projected uh, a pro-abortion slogan on the Basilica. Um, I would love to get your thoughts on that and how you felt about that occurrence. Yeah, I just heard about that this morning yeah. and it was, uh, it was chilling to hear that uh, that kind of behavior would be conducted. But in my homily at Mass this morning, um, I spoke about that. I said, you know, we have the truth and we can march peacefully and joyfully, but there are other evil forces who will try to disregard, uh, to discredit us, and they will not do so uh, in, in ways that are proper. Last night, a uh, projected image on the sacred shine uh, is totally unacceptable. And, uh, but it reminds you of the evil forces that are out there and why a march for life in such a peaceful, joyful way is so necessary. That's really great, and it makes a lot of sense. And I, I saw Archbishop Wilton Gregory saying that it was not all right and saying that the, condemning the actions as well. But I would also love to get your take. I know we saw, you know, we have a new governor of Virginia, and I saw yesterday the Arlington Diocese said that they're going to be following the or, the guidance for schools for the mask mandate. Do you have any thoughts to share with us on yeah, that? Yeah, so we're very, very proud of our Catholic schools yeah. um, throughout the country, but including our own diocese. Uh, the light has been shining in Catholic schools since the COVID started, of finding a way to keep our students uh, engaged, uh, physically present, and safe and healthy. And that's always been our priority. It will continue to be our priority. And all the protocols we have in place to do so remain, and so we will do that. The governor issued an executive order, and so it's an executive order stating that parents may opt out of having their kids uh, wear masks. So our position as a diocese is that we will continue to strongly encourage uh, for the well-being of others uh, the, the consideration of the comprehensive protocols for being safe. But if a parent opts out of that, and as Governor Youngkin pointed to, they should not be denied that thing. We're, we've asked all our schools to respect the executive order. We know it's being sent up to uh, different appeals and things like that, but as, when it goes into effect on Monday, uh, we will uh, operate our schools in that manner. Okay. Great. Yeah. And if, you know, if there's a parent that's upset because they feel like you know, they've received guidance from the diocese, but their school is still not listening to them, what should they do? Well, I think that, you know, always stay in touch with the local leader, you know. And we're already hearing, of course, you can imagine people who were pleased with the executive order and people who are not, you know, and, right. and that's understandable. Uh, you know, there's many different sides to, to this issue. Uh, but uh, what we've been able to do in our Catholic schools, uh, we met similar hurdles along the way with directives and protocols, and we stayed together, and we respected each other uh, along the way. So um, that's what I'm asking uh, the parents, students, educators, our Catholic schools. You've been doing a great job, continue the great work, but let's make sure, even if we disagree with the position, we stay together. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so thank much. You. This is very, very enlightening and informative. Thank and you. it was an honor to be here. Uh,